My arthritis is too bad for high heel shoes, but I can still rock the high heel socks. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Allen. I'm a bioanalytical chemist during the week. And during the weekend, I like to make these little explainer videos. Sometimes I throw in a comic about sciencey stuff. Let's talk about why we get old. You probably know that your skin is made of dead cells. They slough off and they're replaced by living cells underneath. The new cells divide a few times and then die and they get sloughed off in a sort of cyclical process. Mostly our cells know when it's time to die. It's a natural part of the complex program that builds and maintains the human body. But sometimes cells get damaged and one of the things that can break is the automatic self-destruct mechanism. And that can produce something called a senescent cell. Now I'm a little obsessed with senescent cells. They're a relatively new discovery in the biology of aging and they accumulate over time as we age. And they're one of the things that cause the symptoms of getting old. You could think of senescent cells as zombie cells. They're broken but they don't die. At least they don't divide uncontrollably like cancer cells, so they just sort of sit there in low-key distress. This is not ideal and it gets worse. A senescent cell might mutate further, give it enough time and start dividing uncontrollably and actually go on to become cancer. Sometimes senescent cells are considered precancerous because they're a few mutations away from becoming tumors and they're just hanging out, not dying, waiting for one of those mutations to happen. And while they're waiting to become cancer, they're also causing low-grade inflammation. When you get an injury, some of the damaged cells at the injury site go senescent. They send out these distress signals, they help the body heal faster, they can become these pathological zombies for a long time. They just sit there, sending out those distress signals, gumming up the system like fake 911 calls. Well, let's get rid of them, right? So the company did find a drug that kills senescent cells in mice. They gave it a catchy name, UBX0101. <laughs> so there's this Nature Medicine paper, I'll link it in the description, where they injected UBX0101 into arthritic mice in the hopes that they could cure arthritis. They give a link for more information about their drug, UBX101, and they link to papers that describe it as Nevitaclax. Now, apparently Nevitaclax is not the same exact compound, but performs roughly the same function according to the same mechanism of action. In any case, they have the uh, sim very similar uh, properties, and I could actually find the structure for Nevitaclax. It's this pretty little molecule right here. In any case, uh, the idea was that if you inject one of these drugs into a mouse joint that has arthritis, you could kill the senescent cells. And if those senescent cells were causing the arthritis or making it worse, then that would help. And it makes sense that the senescent cells in the joint could be exacerbating, making worse arthritis, or maybe even causing it. Osteoarthritis, a little different than rheumatoid arthritis, is actually caused by, or at least made worse by, injuries to the joint. So if injuries cause arthritis, and we know that injuries cause senescent cells to accumulate, well, maybe the senescent cells are one of the causes of the arthritis. And if you put this drug in, it kills them, which they did, and it did, and then the mice should get better. And they did. Perfect. Unfortunately, humans and mice are not the same, and drugs that work in mice don't necessarily work in people. Uh, so they tried this same drug in humans, and they didn't have any big safety problems, but the senescent cells did not die and the people did not stop suffering from arthritis. So back to the drawing board. In 2022, we are not all going to be able to kill our senescent cells next week and cure arthritis and rejuvenate our bodies, but it gives you an idea of some of the drugs that are in the works, some of the things that researchers are trying and that are going to be uh, working their way through the approval and experimental drug systems over the next five to 10 to 20 years. Uh, drug candidates are entering stage two, so it's just a matter of time before something gets to stage three and then to the market. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I am trying to end videos with things we can do. So I'm a scientist, but I'm not a gerontologist. My research is on analytical methods. So I hope that what I can do can help this kind of research eventually, indirectly, but I wanna do something to help directly. Now, I don't have tons of money, but if you happen to have tons of money, you can go to sens.org, S-E-N-S.org, the Society for Engineered Negligible Senescence, and help them make some targeted investment in new life extension technology companies. Um, I also switched my Amazon Smile to agingresearch.org. Smile.amazon.com directs a small percentage of your purchases to a charity of your choice, and uh, the Aging Research Foundation, agingresearch.org, does 
actually try to get more government money directed toward aging research. So that's a pretty decent investment for small money. Uh, and it's free uh, to move your donations there. So check out that. The smile.amazon.com link is in the description. Finally, you can contact your elected representative. If you're in the United States, you can use the resource in the description to find your representative. According to uh, Izzy Lapowski at wired.com, guaranteeing a robust two-way conversation between Congress and the public requires having more efficient systems in place for managing that conversation, but it also takes the public keeping that conversation going for the long haul, even when it feels like no one's listening. And if we are writing and communicating with our representatives, then we will incentivize them to build the systems to help us communicate better. So even though those systems aren't there yet, we should try to do what we can. Uh, in this United States of America, sending a letter will mean that your mail is going to be reviewed by a congressional staffer who will note what issue it was about and tally that in their statistics. Now, uh, it might get passed onto their bus if it's a really good letter, but that's pretty unlikely that your letter is actually going to reach your representative. The interns are overworked, underpaid, and it's a tough job, so I try to keep my letters short and make it as easy as possible for them. So head to house.gov slash representative slash find your representative, link in the description, and you can write them a note or give them a call. Here is my letter. Dear Congressman, I am writing to encourage you to increase funding for science, the National Institutes of Health, and the National Institute of Aging in particular. If we can slow or reverse the effects of aging, that will help with many diseases. Additionally, this will enhance the quality of life for our aging population. NIH research is the source of new drugs and medical technology. NIH science helps doctors better understand disease. Understanding diseases of the elderly is critical going forward. Thank you. Peter Allen, PhD. So if you want to use something like that for a model for your note, feel free. Uh, I hope this has been a help. We will see you next time.